it's human instinct to protect our spine because it houses the nerve center that controls much of our movement. The spinal cord is well protected by nature. It runs in encased in a cave of bone, and that's the way nature made us to protect that. Unfortunately, as you know, bones can break, and when those bones break, unfortunately, it's sometimes it's those shards of bone that jam into the spinal cord causing the damage. Suspected spine injuries are treated as trauma cases with every effort made to keep the patient still until they reach the hospital. When a patient comes into the emergency room with a suspected spinal cord injury, one of the first diagnostic tests that's done is a CT scan, an x-ray, to look at, see if there are any bones broken. If the clinical presentation is still of a spinal cord injury, then that patient usually is rushed emergently to the, to the MRI machine because the MRI is better at looking at soft tissue. The upper or cervical spine is a common sticking point, usually a compression injury after being ejected from a vehicle, diving headfirst into shallow water, or a thrusting sports impact. Worst case scenarios end up in permanent paralysis. There are two kinds of spinal cord injuries. One is a complete spinal cord injury, where essentially the cord may as well be severed and you have no function, as in no motor strength, no sensory function, and you have what's called an incomplete spinal cord injury where you do have preservation of some of the motor, sensory, or sphincter function. Trauma surgeons often stabilize the spine with rods and screws to give it space to decompress. The problem with nerve tissue like spinal cord and brain, uh, that heals very, very slowly. And that's why I tell people we won't know possibly for up to a year how much better you're going to get. Time and space, two keys in healing an injured spinal cord. For Lee Memorial Health System, I'm Amy Osher.